Alright, Suda Nerd, we are going over another one of your videos. Um, it took me a little while to get to, we got super backlogged, a lot of people are asking us for commentaries, which is great. Um, we're just getting to as many as we can, as often as we can. So, let's play this out. Suda Nerd is the guy on the left, the beautiful, bald badass. I need a little louder than that. Alright, what happens here? Okay. That was a free guard pole with sleeve grips. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. Why did that happen like that? Okay. You hesitate. He walks at you and the first thing you do is, oh shit. Okay, if you'd have just like been in a stance ready to shoot the first time he did this, you blast him, he's down, and you get the two points off this and you're in a much better position to pass than slowly reaching out for him, letting him grab both of our sleeves, and then he gets to pull right away to whatever guard he wants to go to, because sleeve control is that dominant. So it's like, your idea of walking around to the side like this has no chance of ever working when he has this far sleeve control like that, because he's always going to be able to go lasso. Okay, so now he's got a deep lasso, and we're in a terrible spot. He could, right now, very, very easily invert under us and almost plot us, okay? We're in the process, sweep us over to the far side. Um, we are in, we're in trouble. Okay, uh, don't stay here. The way, the way you're staying here right now, like trying to pull yourself down, you are really reliant on being a lot stronger than his legs, you know? Um, that's the problem that being in this reverse De La Hiva really has. Like, grabbing the collar here is fine. That's not a bad idea. I actually prefer to grab it a little bit deeper. But you're hoping you can grab something and literally just mash him to the mat to prevent him from inverting. And in the process of doing that, your elbow line is wide open. So if you lose this pressure for any reason, for any amount of time, he gets to go and applaud it for free. Let's see how it works out, though. And again, this is an example of like coming in when coming in right now is not really what you need to be doing. You actually need to be, yeah, backing up and killing this far side. Him grabbing your collar like that is actually really good for you. And this is what I'm talking about. It's getting sketchy. Good job kind of clearing that leg back out, but you're in a bad spot. You need to get your hips back. You need to get this turned back to the mat. Uh, ooh, that's getting weird. Actually, don't know what happens if you get that because that... That shouldn't happen. Like, you're going to get a pass with this, I think. They'll score it um, when you're down. It's like, that isn't enough to prevent you from getting the pass point sometimes. While we're just chilling here, guys, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment. Maybe hit the notification bell. It helps me and Bird grow the channel a lot, and we really appreciate the fuck out of everyone that's supporting us. I don't know if you're going to get out, though. Like, I think he keeps that arm for a very long time. Good job not letting him elevate your hips here, though. That is good. This is what I was worried about, though. Did he actually let go of your sleeve? You got super lucky he did that. Um, you know, this isn't good, but he could have done something else that would have been bad. Nice, get up, get up, get up. Okay, let's go back. So, you're doing a good job not letting him elevate your hips here. Okay, letting your arm be disconnected. Something you should do in this position is just take your right hand and just straighten it as hard as you can the whole time. And that will prevent his lift from ever going into the rest of your body and it'll make it so he's lifting you from further out with less leverage. It's just a good idea. Generally, you're doing stuff like this when you're lower in a better position though. Um, you're kind of off to the side, almost on the wrong side. Um, if, you were, if you were able to actually shoulder pressure here and grab the gi, that would work out better. Um, the reason we got to this position in the first place, like, it's, it was like weirdness on both sides. Like, from Lasso in general, okay, you did a good job here backing up, you really should be pitting that. But when he grabs your collar, you can take your other hand and grab his own sleeve and then feed this hand to this hand. And now, the only dangerous part of uh, Lasso is shut down. Okay, if you feed his sleeve to your hand that's stuck in lasso, he can't invert anymore. He can't grab your leg and sweep you. Um, it just makes you get actually strong passing positions to this side. You don't have to worry about walking around and stacking them on this side. It's just good. Okay, so that would be a good idea to do. Good job avoiding the leg grab there. This was really dangerous, though, coming down like that. Um, if he was a little stronger or a little better at inverting and lifting your hips up, and getting under your, your hips isn't how he needs to, that probably would have gone differently. Um, I can easily see you getting swept here. So, and then that's kind of what does happen. 
because he is finally able to get under us enough to pull you over top of him. And then instead of sticking with the lasso and inverting to a normal plata, he opts to kick over to the matrix. And now you're in a bad spot. You really need to like step all the way back over and turn into him and per, you know, cause you, you don't have the leverage point right now to just push that foot down and start walking back around this way. So like I would straighten my right leg, try to turn into him, just accept that he's going to be playing 50, 50 almost, or a single X and grab his legs to prevent him from just wrestling up. Cause that's what's coming. The fact that he's on, wait, what? Hold on. Hold the fuck on. Is he grabbing inside your pants? This cheating motherfucker. Look at that ref over there, not even looking at this shit. That is illegal. <laughs> and it's illegal for a reason. It's it's too good. And well, really it's illegal because his hand can get stuck and he can like if you kick and shit, it can twist and break his fingers. But anyways. So yeah, this is the problem is that he actually gets to wrestle up from here. And because he's wrestling up with a cheating bullshit pants grip, you just don't get the option to get away. Um, this is a clusterfuck. You did a good job turning him back over here. I don't know if you'll be able, you know, like, you're gonna end a front headlock scramble, and he has that pants grip still, so it is a fucking pain in the ass to deal with this stuff. You're doing a good job with that, though, but they might score this in a second. If your butt stays in the mat, they're probably definitely gonna score this, so staying up is good. Um, you don't have a lot of leverage to really peel that grip off, though. There, now you have some leverage. Nice job on hooking that leg. And if you guys go out of bounds, I don't even think he gets an advantage there. And you ended up on top anyways. What? Oh, no, he got an advantage for just almost sweeping you in general, not for going out of bounds, so. It's a fair advantage. If only the ref had watched him grab inside your pants, though. None of that would have happened. Okay. Okay. Good entry. Um, you should be ready to switch to a leg drag here. Your hand is in the wrong position. Okay. So, what... Well, let me play this and see if you get something off this first before I start talking shit about it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that was a lot of pressure to get that down. Okay. I'll point out what I would have done differently, but what you did actually worked. So, take everything I say with a grain of salt there. All right. I like the aggressive attempt at passing off of his pole. I think that's fantastic, and you do it really, really well. Um, it is hard for you to actually get all the way down, though, before you can kick his little flexible ass legs over, okay? And you're trying to stay underneath his, head, his leg right here, which is why you feel like you can keep pressuring in, which is good. I would have probably just switched to a leg drag, though. Like, instead, I would have uh, took my... I think it's your... You would have had to catch it with your left arm, which is actually on the collar. No, I think you just might have made the right call in general. If his leg had gotten in front of your head again, I would tell you to switch to a leg drag for sure. But because... Okay, now I would probably really think about it, but you were able to turn to north-south, so now your pressure is going into his hips. So now you just made the right call across the board. Um, good job. That was a good, good pass finish. Good recognizing what was going on, too, and following it through. Okay, his legs are in a sketchy position. Um... There's a really good chance he kips and gets a little bit of space and starts putting it, yeah, putting his foot either in somewhere or hooking something and lifting. So let me let me show you what you should have done to prevent that, okay? So in these north-south positions where people are trying to bring their legs up and over your back, all right, you need to have low forward pressure. Your shoulders are what are going to put his legs back down. So instead of just thinking about sprawling backwards, which you, you really should not do at all because it just frees his hips up. You should get as low as possible, almost chest to chest, and start to walk forward until you feel your shoulders connect to his hips somewhere. And then your forward drive is going to take his legs and put them back onto the mat because your pressure is going into his hip flexors here. Okay, and that would have prevented that. And then if he tries to kick back up and over again, you can look at whatever angle he's kicking up at and then walk around behind it and it's not an issue. Once he does get that belt hooked, though, you are probably losing this position. You gotta think about what's the follow-up pass now. It is hard to just clear these kind of hooks. There's so much pressure. But this wouldn't be a bad um, scenario to just kind of back out completely and try to leg drag him again. Like, the fact that he's crossing over like this, um, I think there is potential for you to get off your fucking knees. Everyone in the world, get off your knees, please. And, you know, back out and drag that to the side. I don't know if his right leg would prevent the crossover though it might because of he still has that fucking annoying foot to belt grip this is awkward this is going to take a lot of pressure or very good angles oh yeah now he's just back in full lasso 
All right, we're in the same position again. Um, I saw you try to circle your hand there. <clears throat> I'm just going to bitch about that concept in general for a second, guys. Everyone in the world will teach you that you can just circle your hand out of lasso when you fucking can't. Anyone whose lasso guard is worth a fuck will prevent you from just circling your hand out. And they will prevent you from getting any kind of angle and retraction where you can circle your hand out. What makes lasso effective is monstrous grip and not so much pulling with their left arm, the lasso hand, okay? But locking, like George locks his fist up behind his own thighs. So every time you try to retract, it just moves his leg a little bit. The pressure doesn't go into his grip. So it's unbreakable, all right? And I just have a problem with the fact that people teach that like it's a viable pass, you know? It's like a, telling someone they can hitchhike reliably. You know you fucking can't, you know what I mean? Like they'll break your arm most of the time, it's a Hail Mary. It's a Hail Mary to expect to circle your hand out like that. And it's risky to do and fail because that is the type of time where people catch quick wrist locks or they invert to the omoplata or they come across and grab your elbow and strip through into the omoplata. It's just dangerous. Mm, what is the ref fixing? Just your belt line probably and your gi. All right, so what we need to be doing right now, first we need to get him out of there. Okay, get him out of that fucking foot inside our collar thing he's doing. Yeah, the ref should have been taking care of that much earlier. He was doing it intentional, but this guy clearly doesn't give a fuck about uh, <laughs> legality, you know, with the way he grabbed your pants and shit, so. Ooh, this is getting sketchy. He switched to De La Hiva. This is fucking way better. You can pass De La Hiva. Passing Lasso is hard, you know. Lasso takes more effort to pass than it does to hold. Okay, we're avoiding the back chase a little bit. It is getting really scary, though. Once he got on our belt there, that is a problem. Keep dragging that leg past. Don't let this guy get on top of you. And he's on top. He's going to get the sweep now. Pause. Let's go back. I missed him switching to lasso, but that's actually great. Your hand is not in the right position here. Um, really, you need to be controlling this ankle line. And the reason you get Baron Bolo is because you were on your knees. If you, were, if you were actually on your feet like you're supposed to be, you can react to him switching to lasso. Or switching to De La Hiva, start turning your right knee out, really controlling this other side. And then if he still tries to get in your belt, you can shoot your arm through to the Marcelo sit-out stuff. Uh, or you can just step back over and then, you know, put a shitload of pressure down into trying to force a leg weave or something. Or going out over that De La Hiva hook and breaking his grips. You know, there's just a lot more options we can do. When we're down like this, you're actually in prime barambolo position you know it's like they want to knock you over to something like this so they can get in your belt and invert it underneath you it's just an issue you don't want to be on your knees okay so he starts to go upside down and you just kind of stay down and you just keep barreling in okay but you're on the almost the wrong side of that leg um i don't think it's likely you're going to be able to, to get a leg drag off of that that angle that he's inverting at so trying to hug this really guarantees he gets to go upside down Okay, because when you're pulling, you're pulling his hip up, and that lets him invert. Okay, and he still has the belt grip. He, ha he has it, like, just straight up your hips controlled with that right hand. Very difficult to uh, break that grip once they have it, especially when our butt's already on the ground. So, like, in this kind of position, you need to think about scooching your hips away from the guy. And now, you could think about trying to counter bolo him. Um, just, I would not let him come on top. What you did with your legs there... Um, you might have been trying to avoid a submission, I couldn't really see, but that I wouldn't have done that. I would have kept scooching back, and I would have made sure I am the one that gets on top without letting him get the Barambolo. Like, if it's Barambolo or death, you know, I'll, I'll let him get the Barambolo, but what's a better way to phrase that? He's going to move you back into the middle, I'm pretty sure. But, like, if I can avoid the barambolo and get on top still that's what i'm gonna do if i have to go on my back to avoid the barambolo that's also okay um you just know you don't want to give up the back chase so if it really was an option between giving up the back chase or being on your back in 50 50 you made the right call i just think earlier on you know if you had played it a little better then we wouldn't have been in that position that's why i always talk about pushing the onus back earlier and earlier Okay, what kind of 50-50 are you going to play? He looks like you could just sweep him and get back on top, honestly. You kind of barely have his knee line, though. And that's a little risky. Hmm.
the way I play 50-50 is, you know, I make sure I get on top when I'm in 50-50 because I am pretty hard to sweep or get my back chased. I trust my ability to pass 50-50 from on top. This is getting bad. Oh, God. Oh, he's on the outside of your butterfly hook. Nice job on the underhook. That's what saves you. Big time. Very well done there. You, uh, you just avoided certain death with that underhook you did. But why did that happen? So, here is okay. Here, you're already starting to cross your hips a little bit too much. You're leaning back to the other side, and I talk about this a lot more in no-gi passing than I do in the gi, but your knee line is actually in this direction, so the second it gets to the outside of that, you have a real problem. And then when you lean forward, you give up almost all of your leg pressure right there. Okay, so then he's able to almost guaranteed walk around to the outside. I think he even pins your... Yeah, he pinned your foot down with his left leg, his left butterfly hook, so that guarantees he gets the circle. And then the more you sit up right now, like, the more he gets a chance to chase your back and climb higher, and that's what's going to give him a dominant position at the end of this chain. Now, what you do really, really well is when you turn back into him, here, digging that underhook was brilliant. Like, absolutely brilliant, because now he can't really chase your back. He has to, like, commit to a full front roll to try to invert it underneath you, and it's just the angle's not quite there. So really, really well done here. Um, even to the point where you stand up. They, they uh... If you end up standing too long and he puts you back down, he'll get two points. And that's kind of iffy if you give that up. Going out of bounds like that right away actually was a good reset for you. It was fantastic. Alright, I don't want to watch this guy tie his belt for a whole minute. Alright. Again, you see he pulls right into... Uh, lasso we need a hand fight way more if you know people want to lasso you something you can do is just try to get control of their sleeve instead of letting them control your sleeve and they'll still kick over for the lasso but when they do i make sure my hand is on the outside of their hand and at that point it's not a real lasso it's not actually dangerous anymore if my hand's on the outside of their hand when they put me in lasso i actually can just pull my elbow back against their pressure and then i can not rotate but i can flick my hand to the outside of their thigh and i can walk over the top and break it and it's basically 100 percent successful unless they don't go they, they take the lasso out while you're doing it and strip and get to the ins outside of your grip again but that's just you losing the hand fight at that point and when they do that you have a passing opportunity of some kind so we are on our knees again this is not a not great you know play i just you're looking at the clock, you're stalling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're actually stalling right now. His legs are open, and the ref is going to hit you in a second. Okay, good job keeping your elbow line free there. You're not getting him applauded. Um, now he's trying to play certain guards. I would have actually just pinned his hip down right there instead of uh, going to the collar. He's definitely going to hit you, though. No, the ref likes you. He's not. He knows he screwed you earlier on, on the inside the pants grip, so... All right, that was a that was a good match. A lot of skill displayed from both of you guys, honestly. I don't see the hand raise. Hey, there you go. So I don't actually really have that big of an issue with you stalling at the end because uh, it's like you were up by a point. You knew you were up by a point. It it just makes sense to kind of hunker down a little bit. There's a couple ways of looking at it though, like myself, I am safer if I'm the one attacking, you know, because if I'm good enough at my attacks that I don't leave offense, it makes him have to react defensively, and it guarantees he doesn't get some Hail Mary burst sweep attempt at the end, you know, um, and, and it's a little more effective use of your energy, but you did get a pretty good solid lockdown in his hips there, you didn't give your elbow line up, he didn't really get a lot of openings, the parts where you're really making a lot of mistakes are um, at the start with guys like this. He's pulled, you know, after he pulled twice straight to lasso, you know he's going to do it a third time. And you still never one time set up to shoot and punish him for it. You didn't hand fight him at all. Um, there, there was basically nothing proactive by you in any of the stand-up stuff. He dictated the whole match and how it was going to go. I did like that after he tried to pull on the second one, you immediately jumped into a guard pass you just had to be ready to chain. Your first pass isn't going to work. It's almost never going to work. You know they're going to kick over or do something 
to regard off your first attempt and you have to be ready to chain that and that involves really make you know guys that just only hunt lasso are a pain in the ass to pass you have to take the time that they're not in lasso and utilize them to their fullest extent like you have to become a honey badger buzzsaw machine as soon as you're out of the lasso or before he puts you in the lasso because you can't really prevent people from putting you in lasso over a long enough period of time it's too easy to do uh, you know if they touch your sleeve at any point you know you're in lasso so you really have to start you know working on the buzzsaw mentality and the open guard passing chains or switch gears you know pass them a little bit in the outside and the second you get them to turn come into something like over unders or a leg weave or anything that is not lassoable okay if that makes sense you know because you know that's all he's really trying to do you know I, I run into the same thing with george it's all he does in the gi every fucking round he's trying to put me in lasso and i have to pass him while avoiding lasso and then if he does get me in lasso i can still open it i can still pass it but it is significantly fucking harder because he has a very good lasso it takes a lot more energy expenditure on my part to deal with it after i'm in lasso and get back to where I can actually pass, and it's more dangerous because that's his favorite position. He has a good offense from there. Okay, um, your lasso passing is not uh, not ideal. Okay, but it's a lasso passing is a tricky thing to do. Um, there's a lot of material out there. I don't know about free material, and I don't have any free videos on my channel yet, but I do have a whole lasso passing instructional. I really don't like telling people go buy an instructional, um, but there are some good ones out there, okay? And if you can find some free material on it, then that's what I would advise to do, okay? But you really need to go and update your lasso passing, all right? Um, you need to stop coming just straight into people, too, and being on your knees and relying on squeeze and pressure, especially at the the weight that you're competing at these people are gonna always be able to withstand that you know everyone at lightweight that's good has flexible legs and they can get their feet in the right position because you didn't create an angle first you just came in and you're just not gonna have a lot of long-term success like that you're trying to play like a super strong man's game um against you know other lightweights so i think they're gonna be able to deal with it for the most part your one pass was really good though um, like I said, you did a fantastic job of seeing the openings and going for it. Not getting your back taken off the Baron Bolo was really good. Uh, like I said, I, I really think you could have punished him a little more. The second he took the lasso out, that's your time to finally go. You know, De La Hiva is super passable. <clears throat> as long as you aren't already getting Baron Boloed. And a lot of not getting Baron Boloed is just not getting knocked over, not letting him near your belt, making sure your knee line's turned out, killing the Daily Heva hook itself, uh, which you can't really do when you're already on your knees. Good job getting to those standing positions again. That really got you out of trouble a couple times, and we were able to utilize it because we are up by points. You know, we, uh, I, like I said, I still really wish you would take him down or at least try to hand fight and be a little more aggressive with the feet stuff. You, I would have even been happy to see you run at him and jump close guard. Okay, um, I don't know if this guy's passing was good. Um, well, actually, I do know it was actually pretty decent because he almost did pass you that one time in a pretty technical way. So maybe going to guard wouldn't have been a great idea. But you, it's just like you know exactly what he's trying to do. And you can plan around it, you know, in ways that make sense. Like attacking him right away, shooting, uh, maybe going close, like sliding into something, wrestling up on him right away. There's just options. But you did win the match. Fantastic job. And if anyone wants me to comment on one of their matches in a similar way, okay, you can check out the Patreon and the Discord links below. Come hop in the channel. Me and Bird talk a lot. Too much. <laughs> you know, we get in the voice chat sometimes. We answer questions about technique and uh, all kinds of shit like that. Otherwise, guys, everyone have a good day, and remember to eat your Panda Express. Bye, have a great time. All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget, we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, alright? 
We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at AndrewRealty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube-friendly content. Currently, I'm at about 42,000 subscribers, and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000, so uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high-quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.